Hello, and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is ITX MQ client connections using SSL. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. In this two part practical demonstration, I take a map that uses the dash CD option for an IBM MQ client connection and alter the map and environment to use the client channel definition table CCDT instead, allowing the use of SSL. For part one, I get the CCDT method working. Server actions are shown in red, client actions are shown in blue. First, I define the server and client connection channels, if not already defined. Then I copy the amqclchl.tab file to the client. Then on the client, I set the mqchllib and mqchltab variables. MQ server must also be unset. Then I run the map without the dash cd option, and it will still connect. For part two, let's get SSL working. Server actions in red, client actions in blue again. I will create the queue manager key store, then create the self-signed certificate in the key store. Finally, on the server, I will extract the public part of the certificate. Moving to the client, I will create the client key store, create a self-signed certificate in that key store, and then extract the public part of the certificate. I will copy the extracted public part of the client certificate from the client to the server. I will add this signer certificate to the queue manager's key store. I will then copy the extracted public part of the server certificate from the server to the client. I will add this signer certificate to the client's key store. Then I will alter the previously defined server and client connection channels to use SSL. I will refresh security Recopy the amqclchl.tab file to the client, and finally set the mqssl key r variable. I want to suggest caution and highlight that none of this setup is suitable for a production environment. These instructions provide a way to get a client server connection working, but offer very little in the way of real world security due to the lack of proper passwords and not securing the private key databases properly. Special thanks to Eric Chin from the MQ team for his help in getting all this working. Further reading, including how to create a JSON format CCDT, can be found at the link on screen. We'll start this demonstration, as we often do, in the ITX Design Studio. As you can see, I've opened a source map called test.mms, and within this source map, I have two maps, test1 and test2. They both have only one output card. The rule in test1 says test message1 from ITX, and the rule in test2 says test message2 from ITX. The only other difference between the two maps is the connection string. In test one, we have the QMN, the QN, and the T options to specify the Q manager name, the Q name, and the trace. But we also have a dash CD option so that we can connect to the system.def.clientcon client connection channel on the remote machine VM16XWMQ on the listener running at port 1414. If we check test two, the connection string is the same, except I do not use the dash CD option. We will build the maps, build all. In my WinSCP program, I've got a connection to my remote Linux machine, and I will copy across the two maps into the WMQ directory. In my PuTTY session, I will set up my environment, which is now done, and I will change to my maps directory and you can see there the two compiled maps that I've just compiled in my design studio. Now one of these maps is going to work and the second map is not going to work. This is because of the lack of the dash CD option and there are no other client connection methods currently configured. 
Here we see I have a VNC connection to a virtual machine running Windows Server 2016. And I have my MQ Explorer open. As you can see, there is currently no queue managers defined. I've got a script to recreate all the objects I need. Let's quickly open that and run through it. Here's my script where I create my queue manager and start my queue manager. Here's the section where I set all the options that I need, including I turn on the channel auto definition. I alter the channel system.def.clientcon to connect to the specific queue manager and the queue manager host name. Here is where I define my server connection channel and I say that the security, for security purposes, the username needs to be set to Paul. Here's where I define some queues. Here's where I disable all channel authentication because I haven't got time to go through all that nonsense today. And there's some more um, changing of security. And finally, at the very end, I run a command to refresh the clchl tab file so that it has the latest content. So let's quickly run that script in a command prompt. Go into my MQ Explorer and refresh. You will note that I now have a queue manager. It is running. You will note that the default listener, system.default.listener.tcp is running. Under channels, I have a client connection channel called system.def.clntconn, client con. And I have an equivalent server connection channel also defined as a server connection channel type. Here's where the MCA user is shown that I defined earlier. And because these two are matching, the MQ channel table has been updated. This should all work now. OK, so back to my Linux machine, and I'm going to show you the messages coming through. Let's show the queues view first. Turn off the system object, so we've only got my objects. You will note that test q one currently has no messages in it. So back on my Linux box, let's run the map to run test one. The map has completed successfully. If we go to the MQ Explorer view and click on refresh, you will note that we have one message in the queue now. If I try to run test two, you will note that I get a target not available message. If I have a look at the log file, you will see a connection failed. If we look at the adapter log, you will see that the MQ reason code is set to 2058, which means it cannot find the queue manager. Now this is because it cannot find a queue definition for, from the client definition table because none of that has been set properly yet. Before we get into the client definition table, let's just quickly go through the MQ server variable, which we can set to also get a connection. I'm going to show the test1.log. This is the map that worked and we have the dash cd option. If I export the MQ server variable to have exactly the same content, and it has to be enclosed in apostrophes, now that the MQ server variable has been set, the test2 map should work again. As you can see, test2 is now fully working, map completed successfully, and if we go back to our queue manager, and refresh, you should see that a second message has arrived on the queue. This is proving that we have a connection from client to server using the test1 map with the CD option, with the test2 map where there is no CD option, but only if the MQ server variable is set, but this is still not using the client connection definition table. So that's the next step. Let's get that working. First job is to unset the MQ server variable, so that that's out of the way. Then we need to copy the client connection definition table from the server to my Linux client and set two variables to get it working. On the server, I'm going to run a script that I have defined. Let me show you the script first. This is the script. It uses a 
pscp command from the putty tool to copy my client definition table which is in a, a subdirectory under Q managers and then the Q manager name which is QMAN PB for me and it's going to be copying it to my Linux machine into the same directory where my maps are so let's run that script now and let's set the two variables that we need to set to make the MQ client see that table here are the two variables that we need to set. I'm going to switch to my Linux box, show you that that file has arrived, amqclchl.tab. Set the two variables, and now, hopefully, my test2 map should work again. And there we go, we have a success. So even though the MQ server variable is not set, this is still connecting because those other two variables kick in, and we're looking at the client connection channel table and finding the queue manager and in that table there is also a reference to the host name and the port to connect to whereupon the connection works and if we look in our MQ Explorer we now have three messages in the queue. So that's the part one complete the CCDT table connection is working. Part two is to get this working with SSL. Before starting part two of the demonstration, I just wanted to show that test Q1 still has the original three messages in it. If we browse those messages, we can see that we have one message from the map test one and two messages from the map test two. If we have a look at our client connection channel at the SSL tab, you will note that currently this is not configured for SSL and everything is being sent in the plane. Next step is to activate the SSL features. So I'm going to be working from my little script here and the contents of this script, all of the commands that I use are going to be included in the video description. I'm in the SSL directory now and I paste in and run my first command. If we open an explorer window at this location, you will note that I now have three files starting with key, ending with .kdb, .rdb and .sth. Back to my script, let's run the second command. I'm pointing to my database, I'm giving a password, a label. This label is quite important, it needs to say IBM WebSphere MQ, and then the last bytes need to be the name of your queue manager, in my case QMAN PB. Back to the script and get the next command. This will extract the public part of the certificate that we just created. If we look at the files that we have now, we have the .arm file from that process we just ran. Back to the script again. The next part of the script needs to be run on the client. So I'm going to copy the command to my clipboard, switch to my party session and run the command. If we have a quick look at the content of my TMP directory, you will see that this has also created the same three key files that we created on the server. Back to the script, create the self-signed certificate, and run the command. And it's quite important again here that the label is IBM WebSphere MQ, beginning of the string, and the final part of the string needs to be the username that you're running under as the client. Back to the script now and let's extract the certificate and we'll have a quick look at the directory to ensure that we have the three key files as well as the .arm file that is the certificate, which we do, that's great. Back to the script now. The next part of the script needs to be run on the server. First of all I need to use a file transfer program to take the arm file from the client, so that's the SSL client sign assert .arm file from the client and bring this into the server before running this command. I've run the command to retrieve the file from the Linux machine and bring it onto my Windows machine. As you can see, I have the client.arm file here now. Now that this file is here, I can run this command to actually import it into the local key store. The next part of the script needs to be run on the client and before I run it I need to transfer the server arm file to the client. So I'm going to use the server to do that now. The 
file has been transferred, if I switch over to my Linux box, you will notice in the TMP directory of my user, Makata, we have the server version of the ARM file that has been copied across here. Now I can run the next command to import that. On the server I've imported the client certificate, on the client I've imported the server certificate. Let's scroll down to the next part of the script. On the server I need to run the appropriate MQSC commands on the queue manager to alter the two channels to use the SSL cipher instead of what they're currently using which is just plain. The first command I'm going to do is altering the system.def.clientcon and the second command I'm going to do is altering the system.def.clientcon that is the client connection type. Previously it was the server connection type. Both channels altered. This will have made changes to the amqclchl.tab file located in the at IPCC directory. So we are going to need to copy that across again. But before we leave the run MQSC environment, I'm going to run the refresh security command. Now I issue an end. And now I need to copy the client connection definition table over to the Linux box once more. If you remember, I had that in our batch command that would do that for me. The file has been copied across. And if we go to our maps directory and we have a look at the date and time of this file, it has just been altered. OK, in theory, SSL has been set on the client and server channel using the certificates that we generated and imported into both key stores. The next time we use the client definition table, it should be transferring our data through SSL. Before we do that, let's have a quick look at the client connection channels. Here we have system.def.clientcon. And if I double click this now and have a look at the SSL tab, you will note that the cipher spec has been filled in. And again, if we look at the matching server channel, also called system.def.clientcon, and look at the SSL tab, this has a matching SSL cipher spec. So the two channels have been updated, the cipher specs match. In theory, our map should now execute and transfer the data through the listener to the queue manager to the queue via SSL. So let's have a look at our messages again. We have three in the queue. Let's run our map one more time. We're getting a target not available. It appears I may have forgotten to do something. Let's just have a quick look at the adapter log. We're getting an MQ reason code of 2381. If we have a look at MQ reason code 2381, you can see that it is a key repository error. Going back to my script, I can see that I've forgotten to export another variable that I need, MQ SSL key R, which tells it where to find the key repository. So let's do that now and try to run the map again. Now, after a brief pause, the map has completed successfully. The data has been transferred to the queue, and we can check there should now be four messages in the queue. There you go, it's just refreshed and showing four. We can be sure that as the only client channel I have defined is set up to use SSL, the data must have been transferred using SSL. So that brings us to the end of our demonstration. As I say, all of these scripts will be included in the video description possibly as a link to a zip file that you can download, along with the maps. And again, a quick note to remind you that this is not a way to secure your messages on production, just a proof of concept demonstrating the techniques required. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button, perhaps leave a comment. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.